Do you want early access? Do you want uncut reactions? If so, then check out our Patreon. Link in the description down below. This episode title doesn't bode well. I mean, given everything that's happened so far, I mean, last episode, they found Mira. I didn't expect it to them to find her that fast, but they did. <laughs> Never mind Asher. He just There's plopped, Asher flopping down. He just plopped his big ass down on the couch. He went floop. Yeah. The Red Mist. That's the name of this episode. And I guess Hopefully just... that doesn't mean that a bunch of those uh, people that were with Mira are about to turn into a Red oh, Mist. Oh, the slaves? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. We'll just have to so see. When I think of a Red Mist, it makes me think of a blood spray. I think of uh, uh, the character from Kick-Ass. Anyway, so we're going to hit, you know, get right into this. This is The Red Mist, episode four of season two of Primal. Here we go. Well, these sounds are interesting. Burr. Bear. All right. Oh, oh there's a lot of them. Tell them to run. Okay. They just got back from a hunt. Don't bow to them. Just run. You can't outrun bears, though. People don't run faster than bears. Uh-oh. Well... <laughs> Smell something interesting? I guess would be Fang. Oh, no doubt. I was gonna say, if there's something to tip the scales, it would be it would be Fang, because What's up with you? Oop. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look out! Oh, damn. Shit. There's a lot of them. <laughs> I think he left the sword in it, though. Huh? So it looked like he left the sword in it, though. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me, actually. <laughs> Death is all that awaits you. Run! <laughs> uh oh, that's not good. I was gonna say the numbers game would start to add up eventually. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh shit. They brought her down. Holy oh, crap. A bear just got thrown through my roof. Oh crap. Uh the boarding belt. Where you gotta you gotta fight back in some way. She doesn't have a bow though, and that's what she's good at. Yeah. Ah, spear. It could be something. 
gonna be awful if he came all this way to save her and she ends up getting killed, though. Oh, that would blow so hard. Ah, oh, shit. Leave the dinosaur alone! I was gonna say, eventually you you die of, like, exhaustion would set in. Oh, damn. Oh shit! Oh! Damn, Mira! Decapitation! No. Uh oh! Damn! Uh oh! Oh no! The axe made. Oh Ooh. no! Oh no! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh! Ho, ho. Stay down. He's trying not to kill you, kid, but he's gonna end up doing so if you don't stop. Ooh. Yeah. Leave. It's the unfortunate consequence of raising your children as warriors. Uh oh. I mean, to an extent, I'm not sure that he wants to leave before finishing the job because he's afraid that they'll come back from here again. Maybe he will. Yeah. I was gonna say an unfamiliar place in the red mist. I mean... Oh, God, oh. dude. Riddled with friggin' arrows. Talk about pure primal rage. I think that was a just they tried to get out and that was the last straw where he's going to kill every single one of them. Because why not? I mean, at this point... Are they are going to kill every single one of them? Yeah. They chose this. I mean, they did and they didn't. They weren't really expecting this to be the consequences of their actions, but... Oh. Well, these oh. people are about to come home to a they're horror gonna show. Find, they're going to find the worst possible thing. No response. Yep. <laughs> I was about to say, no answer. Blood on the docks. You can see it already. Rico. He's going to find the little brother dead. Rika! 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 Yeah. Cry. say cry vengeance and let slip the dogs of war. Viking funeral with the
wonder if they're gonna end up being the final antagonist of the season now. I wouldn't doubt it. Get here's the thing. I don't blame them for feeling this way. I don't blame them. For yeah, it's is extremely good writing because it's literally two dudes that like. Besides being slavers, which is a product of their time. It's like, a product of their time and a They're really their not environment. anybody that we have anything against. <clears throat> no. But they are being set up as the main antagonist for the end of the season. And they're very... It's easy to identify with why they're angry. And they're going to be going after Spear and Fang, you know? Yes. So, like, the writing in this is just... Something else. Oh, the, the writing's top notch. I mean, yeah. Tartakovsky and the crew that he that he has for the writing staff know what the hell they're doing. Mm-hmm. Jeez, us. And again, I just can just the sheer brutal truth of of conflict. Yeah, of conflict of, and what the world is like and used to be like. Always in has been. In some like, cases, it still is like. Yeah. I mean, again, everything. Like, everyone wants to paint a clear picture of black and white and be like, this is what's good and this is what's bad. But here's the problem with this. Whilst Spear and Fang did what they did for what they thought was good, in the eyes of the people of the chieftain and his son that came back... Well, to them, they probably think a fucking army came in and killed their whole village. Well, yeah. They probably couldn't even gather that, like, one dude in a dinosaur fucking did this. Like, well, they don't he, really even probably well, know who they're going after. They're well, I would like, say we got to find the slaves he, that got it, loose from and what it looked like them, his, the tracking instincts of the chieftain kicked in, and plus he saw the footprints of the dinosaur, and, again, I think he would assume we're at least going after a dinosaur mm. in some way. But... And I mean, he's got to assume that a dinosaur is not just going to get on a ship and sail away without a person being with him. Yes. So, and that's. I mean, he's probably going to be looking for his ship that got stolen and then go, going from there, pretty much. Well, all he has to do is just go upriver where they're going and look for the crest that's on the uh, sail. Again. It's a very easy crest to sight. Or are they going upriver or are they going back out to sea to try to get back to where they came from? Well, again, I don't know. I think Mira... I'm not sure what Mira's ultimate... Well, like, what, where they're going. All I know is that they were just trying to get the hell out of there. I mean... It almost kind of looked to me, by the way, like whenever Mira saw that the rest of her people got out of the village, that she split off and joined... Spear and Fang. Spear and Fang on her own to go back with them. Yeah, I maybe so. And again, if that's the case... Maybe they'll meet up with them downriver. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, I Again, we're in the dark in terms of the overall uh, plan that Spear and Fang and Mira have right now. And I think maybe that's kind of the point of this, because now we've switched perspectives. The second half of this episode, we switched to the perspective of the Chieftain and his son, and basically them coming across this massacre. And while I know that... Potentially, that could mean that in the next episode, we're going to be looking through the eyes of the Chieftain and his son uh, as they're trying to track down Spear and Fang and Mira. I would also say, like, I I welcome this because, honestly... I'm also sort of wondering, by the way, if they have allies from other villages. That probably wouldn't surprise me because, because they, trade and you know open trade and all that was very prominent back in the day. Yeah, and just those two going after them by themselves, we obviously kind of know. Basically, due to Fang, they don't really stand a chance by themselves all that well. Yeah, like, even though they're, though they're angry and probably brutal warriors and they got some nice armor, Fang could still probably fuck them both up. But what if they go recruit an army of? Vikings and well, other clans to come uh, with them. In terms this. of Vikings and other clans, also marriage is a very prominent thing. Like, the daughter of the head chieftain would marry the son of a chieftain of another tribe, and thus it would basically make them... all. It would forge a pact, basically, of marriage between the two tribes. Yeah, like, what, they, if, what if the dead lady's father brother or or father you know is actually up at the top of another viking clan and they're gonna go tell them what happened basically he shut the chieftain shows up and he and then they're all gonna come with him like evidence 
and then all of a sudden the chieftain of the other tribe comes up and like puts his hand on his shoulder and basically swears like we will we will get revenge together mm. that's that's how i could see that going but again we don't know this is all this is all conjecture we're all just cuz again there's so many places they could go now with this story and i i was expect i not to say i expected them to run out of ideas but i didn't expect this part of the story to be as engaging as the first season was the first season was basically an experience of us watching the everyday lives of Spear and Fang as they try and survive in this savage world. But now... Like, I really like the format of the first season, but uh-huh. like, if anything, I think the second season may even be better so far. That's what I'm, exp- that's what I'm experiencing, I'm too. I'm still kind of hoping for at least one or two filler episodes. I want like one or two Monster of the Week episodes out of the season. Like, I can see that. Like I, 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 I'm gonna be okay with it if it's all story, but like I still enjoyed the crap out of like the the bat things and like the fucking oh the zombie dinosaur, yeah, the zombie dinosaur, uh, the friggin' uh, and the ex- witches, the, the proto raptor that basically decimated yeah, like everything. Just all it came the across. random things they ended up coming across were just really cool. Oh yeah, and, because uh, again, the river of snakes and shit. Like, yes. You know, like, like, the filler episodes are just really cool ideas for this world, and, like, I hope he doesn't completely stop the world building this season and, uh, in favor, or, like, you know, he doesn't, you know, go in favor of the world, or, like, I guess he doesn't go in favor of the story so much that he completely stops the random world building. Yeah. Because I like the seeing, like, the random ideas for, like, crazy things that are also in this world that you wouldn't expect. Yeah. Which we did get that out of the first episode this yeah. time. Like, the things in the sea, that was a good one for that. But again, it was still then progressing on the plot, yeah, but yeah. it was still a monster of the a monster of the week-esque yeah. style episode. Because we got to see all kinds of different sea creatures in that episode, so that was pretty cool. Yes. But uh, I hope there's at least one or two more episodes where we get to see like some crazy stuff that they fight against, like just some oh, horrors yeah. and shit. <laughs> I'd love to see that, too. I- again... The characters versus the environment is always something that always interests me in terms of stories like this. Whereas the characters versus other characters in the world that are in the world, that's that's what is the driving force behind this season. And so far, I am very much into it, yeah. very much so. But anyway, yeah, this might end up being one of my favorite shows of all time when we get done with it. Yeah. Again, so it's probably gonna be one of those things I actually put on occasionally when I go to sleep instead of Always Sunny. Because I don't have to worry about understanding dialogue while it's on, you know. <laughs> I can just imagine in the but middle. But it's still of the night, another show with Raw going on, like while I'm that's trying what to I sleep. imagine. In the middle of the night, I get up to like make a sandwich or something from my room. All of a sudden, in your room, I just hear Raw! Oh, like it's right now. It's like from over in my room while I'm trying to go to sleep. You'll hear shit like "Don't sit down," <laughs> and, and you'll also hear "I am untethered and my rage knows no bounds." Shit like that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm always like, watching Always Sunny. Newsflash, asshole! <laughs> I've been hearing it the entire goddamn time! Yeah. I mean, like, every character in the show yells, but, like, yes. Dennis especially yells really loud sometimes. And then, of course, Charlie's random screams every now and again. Just like, you've won! <laughs> <laughs> Just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, anyway. He fucking steps in the bear track. <laughs> <laughs> okay again everyone I hate Thanks. to tell you Charlie you're gonna have to get back in the bear trap oh man are you serious I just got out <laughs> freaking uh, not Travis Kelsey but the uh, the fucking center for the for the Eagles telling yeah. him that he's like yeah but that was before Brady had the ball <laughs> yeah Brady's got the ball get back in the bear trap it's like oh come on man I just got out of it <laughs> Does it have to be the same leg? Yeah, same leg. <laughs> God. Uh, so, all right. That's going to do it. I guess uh, this was uh, Kennedy Tartakovsky's Primal, uh, The Red Mist, Season 2, Episode 4. If you all want to see more, uh, I guess check out our Patreon. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, the next episode is up right now, and you can check it out on Patreon. Or if you want to, uh, or if, you know, you want to go back and check out the other ones, Uh, There's a playlist that I'll be linking as well. So, yeah, I guess for now, until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. And this is Ashy Boy. 
and we'll see you later, everybody. Peace.